Hi everyone, my name is Celeste. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a flip through the Horizons math curriculum. We'll be looking at the third grade level, the fourth grade level, the fifth grade level, and finally the sixth grade level. So if you're interested in seeing a look inside this curriculum, how it's set up, how it's laid out, differences between the different levels, please keep watching. Okay, so here is a look inside the Horizons Math Curriculum. Um, I have the third grade, the fourth grade, fifth, and sixth. So in this school year, we will be using the third and fifth grade. Um, and in the past years, we have used fourth and sixth grade. So um, this is a really great math program. What I like about it is that it's a spiral approach. So basically, it introduces a topic, and then it comes back again in reviews. So it has that incorporated right into the lessons. Um, different than mastery, which kind of gives a certain topic, make sure the child kind of understands it, moves on to the next thing. In this case, they're all, they're getting new topics introduced, but also having a chance to review them and solidify them as they move forward as well. So that really works well for, for us and for my family. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a look inside the third grade to kind of just show you how this is laid out because what I noticed is the younger grades, so third grade, and I believe also first and second grade are laid out a little bit differently than the older grades. So I'm gonna show you how this is laid out and then I'll talk about the differences in the older grades so that you have a sense for that as well. Okay, so here I have the teacher's guide and then Horizons comes with a book one and book two. I'm just kind of move this out of the way so we can take a better look inside. See if I can angle this better for you. All right, so I'm gonna show you a look inside the teacher guide first, and then we'll move on um, and show you the, the student books as well. Okay, in the teacher's guide, if you'll open it up, um, it shows that it has section one is the introduction, section two is your teacher lesson, section three is the answer key, section four is worksheets, and section five has the worksheet answer key. So in the introduction section, it has a before you start section, just some information about the curriculum, how it's set up. And then also it talks about a readiness, readiness evaluation that's included in the beginning of each level or each book. Um, so here is the readiness test. So you could either rip this out or you could also, I guess, make a copy if you needed to. But this is the readiness test for the third grade level. Let me see if I can show you a better look at it. So that's the first page. That's the second page. Third page. And the fourth page. So their recommendation is that you give this readiness test within the first few days of school. They have the answer key right before it here for the readiness evaluation. Um, I personally never gave this to my boys. I think I kind of had a sense where they were and kind of knew what level they were ready for. But if you kind of have any questions about possibly what level they're at, I think it's a great option. Um, it's a great resource to be able to see if you take that readiness test. Then it goes into the scope and sequence. So you have a sense of what is going to be covered in the course. Also has a list of manipulatives that you will need. Again, you can get creative. I did not buy anything additional for math. I kind of have a lot of things at home that I think I can use. And um, but again, it does, it does provide you a list in case you'd like to go and kind of gather the manipula manipulatives that you'll need. It talks about the worksheets and where worksheets are used. And I'll actually talk about that in just a minute. So I'm going to move forward to the first lesson. Okay, so this is how it's laid out. For every single lesson in the teacher book, it talks about the concepts that will be introduced, the objectives of that lesson. They provide you teaching tips then they tell you the materials that you'll need. So in this case, for lesson one, for the third grade, you need a number chart, you need a calendar, place value materials, play or real money. And then it talks about different activities that you can do to introduce the next lesson. And then it says you can also use worksheet one, which I'll show you the worksheets in the back. I will say, and honestly, I take every curriculum and I kind of adjust it and tweak it to work for, for my children, which I think is wonderful. 
um, a wonderful thing that you can do when you're homeschooling. So I don't always follow this. Uh, many times I come up with my own ways to introduce the lessons in a way that I think would connect better for my students or my children. Um, also, sometimes I will use one or two of the ideas they have here. And I do not always give them the worksheets. I feel the lessons are enough most of the time. Um, so the worksheets are kind of just optional add-ins once in a while if I feel they're necessary. But I will show you what the worksheets look like. They are in addition to the lessons. If you feel your child is struggling with a certain concept, you can add in that additional worksheet and that will help them solidify that. So that is a great um, you know, option or add-on they have. So, all right. So the next section after all, so they have this for all of your lessons. There are 160 lessons in this course, and then there are tests every 10 lessons. So every 10 lessons, you will have a test and there's 160 lessons. And that is true for all of the levels. So not just third grade, but all of the levels. The next section that you have in your teacher key is your answer key. Now in the third grade level, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it's like this for third grade grade and lower, your teacher answer key has exactly what the student page looks like. And actually, I'll show you so you can see the comparison. So if you look at lesson number one, for example, this is lesson one in the student book, it has a little caterpillar, the little rockets. And if you look here, lesson one's answer key is laid out in the same exact way. So you have your little caterpillar, the rockets. So it's very easy to compare and grade and check um, how your student did. So this changes in fourth grade. So I'll show you how that is different. But this is the case for this. Another thing that's included is also the test key is within this section. So if you notice here, after lesson 10 is test one. So test one's answer key laid out in the same exact way. So this section is your complete answer key for all of the lessons as well as for the tests. Okay, the next section in your teacher key will be the worksheets. This is what I had mentioned that I don't use very often, but um, it is a great option. So here on top, it'll tell you worksheet one. It has them all numbered. Here's kind of a look at, at some of the worksheets. So again, in your teacher lesson um, guide in the beginning, it will tell you when to use these worksheets if you would like to. And you can simply just photocopy them if you would like and have your student work through them. So this is just a look inside the worksheets. So it goes, you can just kind of flip through that so you can see how that works. Okay. And then the final section is the worksheet answer key. So again, same thing as far as how it's set up. It has the same worksheet, worksheet seven, laid out in the same way as the child's worksheet. So you can see and quickly grade the worksheets. Okay, so now as far as the lessons, um, in level three, and like I said, I believe it's the same way on the lower levels as well. Let me show you a quick, um, the lessons are two pages, front and back. So you have the front and the back. So that is one lesson. Every lesson is two pages. So you have the front and you have the back. Um, and then when you get here, the tests are right in the book. Um, I personally just like to rip out the tests in the beginning of the year and I store them separately to give to them when it's time, but um, they do include them right in the student book. So this is an example of test one, front and back. So that is pretty much um, how the third grade level is set up. Again, front, back, one thing I love about Horizons is how colorful it is. Um, and if you have a visual learner, this is an amazing curriculum as far as really getting them excited. I have a couple of my sons are like a lot of color in their work or they add a lot of color into it. So Horizons has been really great for them. So that's a look inside um, the third grade level. Now I'm going to show you the difference in the fourth to sixth because a couple things are structured a little bit differently. Okay, so here's a look inside the fourth grade level. Again, we use this in past years and some of the, most of the book is set up the same. So same um, way the beginnings are set up. Um, the lessons again, same um, structure of the setup. So as in the other books. Now where it is different is where you get to the answer key. So when you get to the answer key, instead of having kind of the 
kind of the picture of the actual page so it looks the same. Instead, what they have is just, they have the answers numbered with um, the answer. So basically like number one, here's your answer. Number two, here's your answer. So it doesn't have like the problems. Um, instead, it just has the answer. I personally kind of like the way that the younger grades are set up. I think it's just easier to see the problem and really see maybe where they went wrong. Um, but this is kind of how it's set up for the older grades. So again, it's not, it just has kind of the answers numbered, which is different. And this is the way it is for fourth, fifth, and sixth um, in those levels. So another difference is in this section, the test key is separate from the work book key so in the third grade level it was all kind of together in order kind of as the test came here you have your test answers separately so here are the answers to test one two and it kind of goes up so you have a separate test key so that is another difference um, here's a quick look inside the worksheets for fourth grade again very similar it's laid out in the same way but just I'll give you a look inside in case you're interested in seeing some of the worksheets for the fourth grade level Right. And the last thing or the last difference, I should say, is the introduction of unit tests. So in fourth grade, they introduce unit tests in addition to the regular tests that come after every 10 lessons. So here you have a quarter one test that you give after lesson 40. These tests are longer. So this one is one, two, three, four sides, four sides, um, so four pages. This is quarter two test after lesson 80. Again, that one also is four sides. Quarter three test after lesson 120. And then quarter four test, which is the final one after lesson 160. And then it also has a final exam. So I'll just show you very quickly. That's the final exam that covers the entire course. So this, let me see how long this one is. One, two, three, four, five, six pages. So again, that's optional. If you'd like to do that for the end of the year, you can choose whether you just wanna use the regular tests that are incorporated in the course, or if you wanna add into in these additional tests um, as well. And then here is the unit test answer key in the back. So the last thing I wanted to show you was a look inside some sample lessons of fourth, fifth, and sixth grade levels. So I showed you some of the third, but I thought in case you'd like to see kind of how a lesson is laid out inside these books, um, you can kind of see that. Um, one thing with another additional difference, and I should have mentioned this, with the third grade level, um, the lessons are only two pages, so they're a front and a back. Once you get to the fourth grade, Sometimes they are front and back, or sometimes they could be three sides. So this is a fourth grade level. Again, we already did this course, so it's already filled out. But this is lesson 21. So it always introduces the concept. And then it has, so this is the first page, second page, and then the third page. So in this case, this lesson was three um, pages long so that is a look kind of into book one of fourth grade for book two i'll show you a sample also from that which is the second half of the year so this is lesson 124 so it's rounding decimals it explains the concept and then their activities so this is the first page and then the second page. So that one was just two pages of work. So that is a look inside the fourth grade. For fifth grade, book one. Again, we have not done this yet. We will be working on this with my um, middle son for this year. This is a sample of, this is lesson 32. Has factor trees there. So one, two, let's see, three sides to one lesson. So again, starting in fourth grade, the lessons do get a little bit longer, sometimes being three sides. So again, this is lesson 102. And I will just say, this is what really motivates. I, my, my second son is so creative. He loves to color. He loves to draw. So having these types of coloring activities intertwined with his math um, is really motivating for him. So um, again, this is the front. And in this case, it's only two pages. So again, it rotates between two pages or three pages. 
Lastly, I'll show you a look inside the sixth grade level, um, which is the final level kind of in this setup. I know Horizons also does have a pre-algebra course. I've never used it. I don't know too much about it, but I know in this kind of setup, sixth grade is the final level. I do not have book one, unfortunately, to show you, but I'll show you a lesson in book two. Again, you see it's one page, two pages, three pages. So very similar. Okay, so that is a look inside the Horizons Math Curriculum. If you have any questions about the curriculum, um, the information that I shared, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to share our personal experience with it. Again, it's really worked well for us. All of our boys at some point have used it or will use it. Um, we love the spiral approach to learning, how comprehensive the math is, how colorful and fun it is. So it really has worked well for us. I'll be sure to link in the description box below in case you'd like to check it out. Um, and also, if you'd like to see a flip through or more in-depth look into any of the other curriculum I shared in our curriculum choices video, please let me know. I know many families are looking to buy curriculum or making final decisions, preparations for the new school year. So I'd be more than happy to show you a look inside. I hope you and your family are well. I hope you are blessed. I look forward to talking to you soon.